Welcome to the Green and Gold Gridiron Show. My name is Margo Morin. I'm Chris Sheets from Kissing Country 103.9. Tough loss for the Eskimos on Saturday night at Ivor win. It was a nail biter. Certainly the Hamilton Ticats proved uh, that they are for real this year. Big game coming up on Thursday. We'll talk about that more before the show is through. But first off, we have teammate trivia with Jason Goss, and then we're delving into the world of quarterbacks and running backs with Tom Richards in Football 101. Teammate trivia once again. This time we're going to quiz you on Jason Goss. So, what's been the highlight of his career so far? A, being named a CFL All-Star for the first time last year. B, scoring his first CFL touchdown in Hamilton in 2005. Or C, 144 yards on three interceptions and two touchdowns last year against Hamilton. I'm going to say that's C. I mean, that's what I would call C. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, it has to be actually making All-Star last year for the first time. No three picks and a tug. Oh, right. oh, you get that. <laughs> All right. If he could be any actor or recording recording artist, who would he be? A. Denzel Washington. B. Jamie Foxx. Or C. Kanye West. Mmm. Denzel. Dang, he took mine. I'm gonna go with Denzel too. Probably Jamie Foxx. What's one word that describes his personality? A. Patient. B. Determined. Or C. Timid. Determined. Patient. Patient. Goss, you are horrible, dude. Hi, I'm Tom Richards with Football 101. This week I'd like to talk about offensive formations, specifically with regards to the quarterback and the running backs. So for now, all I'm going to draw up is a balanced formation for the receivers. Important thing to remember, we have to have seven guys on the offensive line. Here's the offensive line, the ball is right here. Five guys, and everybody, all the receivers. Now, quarterback, Ricky Ray, if he's up on the line of scrimmage, he's right there, right behind the center. If he's in a shotgun formation, he'll be about seven yards back. Running backs, let's bring Ricky back up here. If we're in a split formation, one there, one there. Pretty simple, about four to five yards back from the line of scrimmage, kind of in between the guard and the tackle. If we want an I formation, just like that, it's just in an I. Sometimes you'll see the running back run up right here behind the tackle, and then we'll have one in the backfield. So they can really move all around the field. For more information on Football 101, go to esks.com. Well, there are Edmonton Eskimo players from all over North America, but some are local boys, just like Chris Chinsky from Sherwood Park. Uh, you know what, Chris uh, led the Eskimos in special teams tackles last year. Absolutely amazing, and just a great local story, Margo. Yeah, he got his start flipping burgers and frying up onions right here at Commonwealth Stadium. Also was a paper boy when he was a kid. That's where he developed his love for rollerblades. <laughs> Next up, him and Alana Nolan get out to the River Valley for a quick chat in a rollerblade. down here in the beautiful River Valley on a gorgeous sunny day with last year's special teams leading tackler Chris Chinsky and we're going to try our hand at rollerblading. Now Chris, let's, it's kind of an interesting story how you got started in rollerblading so why don't you tell us. Um, I started rollerblading when I was quite young delivering, delivering newspapers around the neighborhood. Um, started out riding my bike but it just took too long hopping on and, and getting back on again so I tried my hand at rollerblading and I found it was much more efficient and it's kind of something that I've been doing ever since. So I've been rollerblading for a long time. All right, well we'll keep talking, but let's get this show on the road. Sounds good. These blades aren't gonna ride themselves. <laughs> One of the nice things living so close to here, it's kinda of like my backyard. You can, you know, as long as it's a sunny day and not raining too bad, just put on the rollerblades and rip through the trails. It's pretty nice. Pretty good trails, good view alongside the river. So you had a couple of jobs at Commonwealth Stadium other than the one you have now. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about those? Um, as a fundraiser for my track club when I was young, um, it would be basically just the whole club working in the concession stands at all the games and concerts. So making hot dogs and hamburgers and pop and all that other stuff to the fans and stuff. It was pretty cool, it was fun frying the onions. <laughs> all, that, all that good stuff. So the first time that you stepped into the Eskimo dressing room, what was that feeling like? You saw your name there, and what was that experience like? Oh, it was just 
It was, an, it was just an awesome experience, great experience, walking in, seeing your name up on the wall, and then uh, the best part was, was seeing my two uh, locker mates. Um, my neighbors, on one side I've got Patrick Cabongo, who's 6'7", like over 300 pounds, and the other side I've got Kelvin Armstrong, who's also 6'7", both offensive linemen, and two biggest guys on the team, and here I am, one of the, like, you know, in height-wise, shorter guys on the team, so it was pretty funny, but it was great just to walking in and, you know, seeing all the history behind the club that you watch growing up, and to be a part of it was something pretty special and really exciting. So you have a lot of involvement in the community. What are some of the things that you, you do? Done sustainability blitz, green zone sustainability blitz, going to schools and just talking about the environment and being sustainable. Um, stay in school programs, football camps too, helping out and stuff. So just being able to be given the opportunity to go into schools and, and talk to kids and how those kinds of things have helped my life and gotten me where I am and and it's just great. There was one particular school that thought you were kind of a big, big deal. Yeah, one of the um, Ukrainian bilingual schools we went to first in school program. Um, I grew up taking Ukrainian bilingual and, and basically at the end of our spiel, both stay in school and getting our good points across. Uh, one of the kids asked if I could read what was written on the wall, and it was a passage from Tereshevchenko. And I read, in, I read it verbatim on the wall, and all the kids were cheering and clapping. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty awesome. That's it for another edition of Out of Bounds. Chris, thank you for spending this gorgeous day with us. We'll see you out on the field. Do a jack you. Sherwood Park's own Chris Chinsky, what a great story. That has to inspire local kids who dream of wearing the green and gold someday, Margo. That's right, and another local talent, Taylor Inglis, is teaching some minor football players the art of the long snap in the three-minute drill. Hi, I'm Taylor Inglis, a long snapper for the Edmonton Eskimos. I'm out here with a couple of guys from Austin, O'Brien, and the Spruce Grove Cougars working on some long snapping. What's your name? Zach, Josh, Shane, Mark. All right, so we've got Zach, Josh, Shane, and Mark here. And I'm going to go through the uh, basics and the fundamentals of long snapping. All right, fellas. So you come up to the ball. Obviously, it's punt or field goal. You get set over the ball. Your feet are a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Make sure your toes are parallel with each other. Everything's running straight forward and straight back. You don't want your feet angled out. Like I said, straight forward, straight back. That make sure everything's the same every time. You want to get set, come down, bend over the ball. You don't want your weight too far forward on the balls of your feet or too far back on your heels. You want to be able to uh, sit comfortably. All right, when you get down, your grip, at least for me, my grip is the same as when I throw the ball, right? So I can literally pick it up and throw it, and I'll take it, snap it from here. All right, so once you got your dominant hand on the ball, you put your guide hand on the ball. For me, I like to have my middle finger along the seam here with the top of it at the, uh, the white stripe, all right? Once you know your call, where your blocking is, where your help is, snaps on you, obviously, so it's when you're ready. You fire the snap back and you pop up to block, and if you got a Liz call, then you're blocking left. If you got a rip call, you step and you're blocking right. Pop your man, make him restart, take off downfield to make a tackle. All right? So let's partner up now. We're going to do, uh, do a few snaps here, and I'll give you a few pointers as we go along. Okay, good. And you're doing it, you guys were, you were fairly straight wrist and you didn't have a great spiral on it, right? So what you wanna do is take your wrist and turn it underneath and that's where you get your spiral from. Okay, I know it's uncomfortable, but long snapping is not a natural thing. So it's <clears throat> something that you have to do and get comfortable with. All right, that was good. Um, you, when you're gonna generate your power from your snap, you're gonna have your hips firing through, right? And that's where you're, it's called a hitch. So you really hit your hips, and that's where you're going to get a lot of your power. So you're going to incorporate that in your snaps. All right? All right, Shane, go ahead. All right, that was good. You got a good spiral. I see you cocked your wrist under there. Now make sure when you're following through, your thumbs are pointed up and your fingers are pointed at your target. Okay? A little high. So when you're done, when you follow through with your snap, fellas, all right, you want your fingers pointed where your target is and your thumbs pointed up. So it looks something like this when you're done. All right. 
And when you're practicing, you really want to exaggerate your follow through. So when in a game, it just happens naturally, all right? That was a good snap, by the way. Nice spiral. There you go. That was nice. I think uh, you might want to move your guide hound down a little bit on the ball. Down. Yeah, when you do that, you also have the ball. It's, it tends to, to sail a little bit lower. The higher your guide hand is, it tends to sail up a little bit, all right? Okay. All right, obviously you're a little off balance there, okay? What I want you to focus on next time is getting down over the ball and just sitting there and being still. Don't move until you actually physically move the ball straight backwards. And at that point, you get your hips and your, your arms moving at the same time, okay? All right, guys, those are a few pointers that helped me when I was learning how to long snap. Um, you know, if you practice every day and you keep consistent with what you're doing, you're gonna get real good at it and you have the ability to take your trade to the next level. All right, so thanks for coming out. It's good to see you guys, nice to meet you, and uh, keep snapping. That's it for this week's episode of the Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Don't forget to join us every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m. on Shaw TV Channel 10. You can also check us out on esks.com or shawtv.com. Huge game uh, Thursday night, Margo. The Eskimos taking on the Calgary Stampeders for the first time right here at home. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock. And don't forget you can listen to the game on the voice of the Eskimos, 6.30. Chad, now the week after is a bye week for all the players. For us as well, I'll be spending some time, Brian Hall and I, just eating ribs for that whole straight week. But till next time, go Esko! Go!